Welcome to Funnel Reboot, the podcast that shares ideas on how to upgrade your lead generation. Here is your host, Glenn Schmeltzley. Welcome to Funnel Reboot. The question on today's episode is whether university and college curriculums are keeping up with the changes happening in digital marketing. Look at a study that Professor Scott Cowley of Western Michigan University did where he surveyed 529 U.S. marketing programs. Here's what he found. Out of all higher education institutions that teach marketing, 27% do not offer a single digital marketing course. Of those that do have digital in their curriculum, half of them offer only one digital marketing course. It seems, even when schools have a digital component, that they're uncommitted to it. And this leaves us with students at 9 out of 10 of these schools graduating where they can have a degree without being required to take a digital marketing course. Now, Prof Cowley pointed out the mismatch between these schools and the outside world. In the abstract, it says traditional marketers are struggling to upskill and marketing graduates have studied a syllabus that doesn't include digital techniques, and digital professionals thus have inconsistent abilities due to a lack of standardized skills training. Okay, there's some doom and gloom there, but, you know, to counter it, there is a growing number of professors that are bringing off-campus experts and their ideas into the classroom to equip the next generation of marketers. Academics, like our guest today, are turning these programs around. And I was actually going to call this episode Degrees of Change, but I thought that was way too bad a pun to use. Before we get into that, I want to remind you that this is your show. This and other episodes only aim is to cover areas of digital marketing and lead generation that you care about. Please let me know what you've learned or what you're interested in hearing by connecting on Twitter or on Instagram at Funnel Reboot. Comment back to me. I love keeping it a two-way street. And if you want to leave me feedback, put it through either our form on FunnelReboot.com or you can call 613-703-7073. If you leave me some listener feedback, I may even be able to use it on the show. And if you really like what you're hearing and you want to get new episodes as soon as they're out, hit the subscribe button on your listening app. Oh, and of course, it would just make my day if you left me a review there too. So let's get to our guest, who's a professor who, before his teaching career, had years of private sector experience, and he worked in media companies and the mobile tech space. And as I said, in the higher ed system, he is influencing how marketing programs are being taught to include more digital. All right. Well, um, I'm very glad to have our guest today. And let's hear from our guest, Jonathan Simon. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks, Glenn. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks. Um, we're uh, chuckling a bit because we have uh, the topic today is about how higher education institutions have a role in marketing. And I was quipping to Jonathan before that uh, William Gibson, the sci fi author, talks about the future. And instead of it being something that is everywhere, he says, no, 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 the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. And uh, Jonathan is a guy I find who has uh, a uh, wonderful existence in that he straddles the world of, let's say, the, you know, 10 minutes in the future that is happening out in industry. And then he has another part of himself that is in the world of traditional higher education. Uh, Jonathan is a professor at the Telfer School of Business at the University of Ottawa. And with that little introduction, Jonathan, maybe you can just tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so I kind of have two roles at the school. I'm the marketing and communications director at the Telfer School of Management, University of Ottawa. And I also teach digital marketing to uh, undergrad and graduate students at at the school. That's in a nutshell what I do. All right, great. And the, 
you know, school programs obviously are probably not like what they were when I was in school. And if our listeners are anything like me, they probably have been out of school for a while. So can you maybe give us a really quick cook's tour of, let's say, what that undergrad program would contain? What sort of subjects a student would get immersed in if they're going through it? Yeah, so like most business schools, and you know, you say that Glenn, where maybe things have changed, and in some ways they have it, and this is what we're we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of business schools, uh, the the core curriculum when you come into a business school hasn't changed all that much. So you come into a school, you're going to get you know marketing 101. You're going to get finance and economics and macroeconomics and microeconomics and accounting, you're going to get all that in, you know, the first and second year. Uh, and then you're going to start to specialize in the last years and you're going to decide, well, I want to be a marketer now, or I want to be a finance person. If you d- decide to go down the marketing route, um, then you're going to get into more specialized courses like service marketing and uh, brand and other things. So s- still today, those are more theoretical things. But I think where things have changed slightly is we we brought in uh, more practical courses that are going to help shape uh, your, your education, especially as it comes to uh, marketing being so tied to technology today and digital marketing being um, the, the thing that you need. I argue that, you know, we, we, we have a class which I teach called digital marketing, and I would like to just call it marketing because I feel like everything right. is digital. And I feel like, you know, from day one that you walk into a marketing program, your prof should be talking about digital in some aspect, even if it's theoretical. This is what, you know, if you're talking about analytics in and day one, if you don't mention Google analytics, the student's are already a little bit behind. So I think, you know, professors are understanding that they're starting to um, pivot and change a little bit. I still think there's huge amount of value in learning the theoretical things behind marketing, the understanding, the psychology that's behind there. And then you layer on top more of the practical tools and things that you need to know so that when you get out of school, you're, you're ready to go. So right. that's, that's typically, you know, at a BCom level, that's what we're seeing. Cool. Uh, when you talk about how there needs to be a practical part to it, um, tell us about how you actually, in the courses that you can control, uh, try to make that happen. What do you do so that the students can experience as much of that real world digital marketing as they possibly can? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. I I didn't go to school for marketing. I, I got, cut my teeth in marketing. Um, because I, I I just wanted to promote myself selfishly, um, and so uh-huh. I learned how to do that on the internet um, when 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 it was early early days, and so um, I realized going to school way back when I went to school that my learning style I, I couldn't memorize textbooks I would you know I would zone out in in, in lectures because it wasn't interesting it just wasn't the way I learned so when I had the opportunity first to to teach. Uh, at first, I, I I taught at Algonquin, and I was given an opportunity to um, have my own class for the first time. And and basically, my only guidance was, you know, teach them digital marketing. Uh, you can design the course how you wanted. I wanted to put a practical element to it because I, that's how I learned. I learned by repetition and oh, this is how you're supposed to do it. Let me try it. And once I tried it. I, I learned it. So I learned by doing. So taking uh-huh. that, I went into the classroom at Telfer and kind of tried to do the same thing. I felt like students couldn't learn digital marketing unless they practically were able to do it. If I just stood up there and explained what SEO is uh, and you weren't able to actually attempt to try it on your own, what use would that be? So I partnered with a, a, a local company in town called PageCloud who were willing to Uh, provide my students with free websites to design um, and they were able to so I I, that was like the the class project and so they had to put a brand together whether it was their own company or their own personal brand or whatever they wanted to do they had and I found students were 
first of all, they were shocked with that because it was such an open thing. And and I think what business schools need as well is more allow more creativity, right? We 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 lock people into certain things, and once the students realized they could they could create anything, that almost scared yeah. them a little bit because what do you mean I can create anything I want? And and it it got them out of their comfort zone, and and then they got used to that. And so by doing a project for a semester, um, when I taught about content or SEO or data analytics, they could actually go and check their own Google Analytics and see if anything happened when they promoted their website. And so um, I found that that was a great way for students to learn. And, you know, I think that the only digital mar- digital marketers that exist today, if you're a digital marketer today or you're in marketing, um, you're only here not Yes, you might have gotten it in school, but it's because you had your own project along the way or somebody forced you out of a project to do it. And so taking that learning, knowing that and putting that in the classroom is what I strive to do. Perfect. Uh, and I love how you use, you know, real world tools and the students can uh, go in any direction that they want. You said that you moved from uh, Algonquin, which is a community college here in Ottawa to uh, University of Ottawa. What differences do you see as far as how the structure uh, or content inside the courses can be? Is university, you know, that much different or I've always been used to thinking of colleges as uh, trying, you know, no holds barred to meet employers needs. And in the university mold, I, I see it as more of, they have a curriculum and they don't want anybody who comes out of their uh, program and gets that piece of paper to not have some fundamentals down. Do you see that or are, are the differences very small to you? No, I see that. Um, I think universities and their curriculums are built in a way to give you a more broad look at everything and decide what, what it is you want to do and you can specialize later. Whereas colleges, um, you you can know already, I want to specialize on this, and it can be very narrow um, to go in. And for some people, that works for their career. And for other people, you know, a university education is, is better because they can dabble in different things because they don't know. Um, and even if you are 100% sure that you want to be whatever you want to be, and you go into a very specific college program, um, it, it's not to say that later you change your mind and, ho- you know, and so there's pros and cons into going into either one. I think uh, it depends on the student and what they're trying to get out of school. And there's so many cases of students starting at a university like University of Ottawa, um, then going, finishing a four-year degree, maybe fin- finishing more specialized something at Algonquin College or vice versa, starting at Algonquin and then trying to get rounded out by going to the university. And, you know, luckily those two schools in particular have a a program that recognizes credits and things like that. So you can jump from place to place. And I think that's very, we're very lucky uh, in Ontario to have uh, those opportunities for students to to try and see what works for them. Um, I subscribe to that. I'm one of those. I jumped between both and got the specialty at the, college level because yeah it was what I needed for uh, my position at that time Uh, whether you're talking university or uh, people rolling out of a college program they're all aiming to get into the job market and I guess we could consider them you know your product right so when higher ed is uh, moving these students out and you're hearing back from employers on what they like and what they don't like what sorts of things does that make you look at for how you tweak the product while you're developing uh, those students to try and move them into those professions? Yeah. So, you know, great question, Glenn. I think, um, you know, we want ultimately a, a school success is based on how successful that their alumni are, right? Um, if if yep. you go to a school and you become great and you can link that back to the learnings you got at the school, then you know what, we're doing a great job. And so I think a lot of schools, especially when it comes to marketing, are hearing back from the from the employers and saying, this is great, you know, a solid education. I went there. 
Um, but hey, guys, you know, the world is changing. We're going digital and we need you guys to to be a little bit more practical or get them some more tools and things like that. At the University of Ottawa at Telfer, um, you know, on that line, we created a, a digital marketing certificate, which is a, a 10 week like no holds barred boot camp, which is taught by industry professionals around town here. And, yes. you know, you can go to that whether you're an undergrad student or you've graduated or you want to come back to school and learn and get your chops up again on what's going on. And it's, it's, it's tools based. Um, it's, it's kind of like the, the, the latest thing that's going on to kind of get you up to date. So, you know, those, those are newer programs that are being introduced across the country um, to meet demand for what uh, employers want. And, and as you know, employers, are are fed up sometimes with higher education to the point where they're not requiring degrees anymore to apply for these roles. They don't care yes. that you have a university, a bachelor's degree anymore. Whereas 10 years ago, 20 years ago, um, yes. it, we couldn't get jobs uh, if we didn't have a bachelor's degree. It was frowned upon. It wasn't a way to have a life. Now yep. that is less of an issue. And that has to do with um, higher education not pivoting, I think, quickly enough uh, where it needs to be, uh, and 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 new opportunities showing up. Yeah, I agree. I think the um, there's always another side. The other side I see is that if uh, a lot of employers out there start to accept students who come out without having any education, then they're going to be responsible for the gaps. And I've seen myself, uh, like in an extreme example, I saw a student and they were working with us for a short while. I gave them uh, something that involved some data analysis and they told me that they knew spreadsheets quite well. So I gave them that and they were working along on it. And yet, um, although all the numbers were neatly lined up in rows and columns, when I asked them to do a simple formula inside one of the cells, they couldn't do it. They, they seen, yeah. you know, and, and they rushed to YouTube or I think in one case, God forbid, they got out, you know, their phone calculator and started yeah. adding like, no, stop. You know, you, yeah. you've missed one of the biggest things that a spreadsheet is meant to do. Um, so yeah, you, you have to be careful uh, because in a academic setting, um, you can almost be a hundred percent assured that their exposure to different subjects will have bumped them into something like that. And they won't come out of the program, not knowing some of those basics. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, for me, I think university education is still very important. And even I look at my kids who are very young, it's something that I will push them towards. Why? Because you get a well-rounded experience and you touch many different things that if you're left on your own devices or in a specific program, you can just say, I don't want to do that. You can say that that's uh, boring or I, I, you know, you can skirt, skirt past it. Whereas I think universities high, uh, they hold you to a higher standard and that is confidence that employers can take when they, when they see students coming out of those schools that they, they have, basic knowledge of Excel. They have basic knowledge of terms that are very basic in marketing and so that you can speak the same language. I think that's very important. Right. Let's talk for a second about how universities are divided up into departments. I'm, I'm thinking about how marketing has changed so much, um, how technology has you know, become synonymous with marketing. And uh, I remember back to when marketing courses were given, the types of students that you would bump into would be journalism school students or English lit students, you know, communications. Um, and I don't imagine those are the kinds of departments. I mean, sure, they're there now, but um, can you tell us if there are other disciplines that are seen as like sibling or related or that you even see students in your own classes that are taking uh, other kinds of subjects that are on the shoulder of marketing, but that will certainly take, you know, a bigger part in the, how the future of 
you know, people using these skills go. Right. So, you know, I, I see it from a different side because I hire a lot of co-op students. And so when I, when I look at the resumes that come in front of me, because anybody can apply, whether you're an electrical engineering student or anyone, um, I'm going to side on the, the marketing student just because I, I teach them. So I have a familiarity of what they're going to come to the table with. But then yep. second to that is communication students. I think they're getting an education around how do you communicate digitally, um, which is very related to marketing, mm -hmm. marketing communications, the vice versa. It's, to me, it's all the same thing. And then what I find very interesting is digital content creators, right? So these are people that might have been in graphic design or looking at video content or, you know, they're not traditionally in other types of schools, but content is such a huge part of marketing today. And, you know, we're on yes. a podcast, you know, it's, it's, yes. I, you know, I, I, I've told class, a room for the students. I said, if you like content, and you want a job for the next 10, 15 years, learn video. Every marketing department is going to have a video person on it. And yeah. uh, you should learn video or learn how to do a podcast or audio, video. These things are important. We expect students now that are digital marketers to have an analytical mindset and a creative mindset at the same time. And it's a unique skill set. I'm lucky to have that. Um, I know a lot of digital marketers I know have that, but it it not a lot of people have that skill set where you can think creatively and analytically to move things forward. Uh, yeah, and that versatility, that having your own voice, uh, that being outspoken nature is something that uh, if you show the students how to do that, uh, and they just take to the tools that are, they're native to, um, yeah, they'll be off to the races. You're reminding me a lot of a NYU professor, Scott Galloway, who does the same thing. And, you know, both of you have not only, you know, a job in a classroom and you could do your lecture to those students and the outside world would never know about it, but you don't. You have, you know, you, you post stories about it on social media and, you know, it, it's important for them to see like you being on the podcast here that we are using the very media that we're encouraging them to use. Right. We lead by example. Yeah. It's, it's funny because, you know, be, prior to moving into higher education, I worked in startup. I worked in mobile. I worked in the music industry and I had kind of had this, you know, winding career of trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do. But the one tying thing through all of that was, uh, marketing using technology. And so I branded myself a digital marketer and very early on into wanting to, to give back and teach what I felt like I had to learn on my own. Mm -hmm. I, my biggest fear joining a university, an institution like this was I am now going to be the irrelevant professor that, that I scorned, that I did want to learn from. And so yeah. Uh, I I try very hard to make sure that I I'm not seen as a fraud um, and say, well, you know, do all these things, go on LinkedIn, you know, meet with build your own content, breach employers. If I'm not actually doing that myself, why should you learn from me? Like what what I'm yeah. now outdated. You know, I look at things like TikTok now and I pushed my team to start, you know, a university TikTok account from tougher school of management, but it's, it's run by students. We, we, we look at it, make sure the content's good, but it's, but it's like, now I'm on this new platform and, and for the, one of the first times in my life, I feel old that I don't understand. <laughs> TikTok. I don't know what's going on, but I, I, I feel like I need to, I can't, you know, and so I need to teach that in the classroom. I can't just talk about Facebook in the classroom. The, the same thing I taught three years ago. I need you know, to update my, my slides, let's talk about TikTok. Let's talk about the controversy. Let's talk about um, privacy concerns. Let's talk about how, how creators are flourishing on that platform and how they're not and how you can leverage that for your brands. Um, and if I'm wow. not yeah. up to speed and doing these things, 
then I'm going to turn into the 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 professor that um, I I never I don't want to be. And so I'm always constantly fighting. And what I tell my students is, if you really want to be a digital marketer, you're going to have to learn for the rest of your life. And if you're not okay with learning for the rest of your life, this is a lifestyle. I teach you a lifestyle. Digital marketing is a lifestyle. And you have to take the opportunities. When someone says, let's do a podcast, you can't say, well, I'm, I'm no, that's too much work. I'm not going to you know, do that or prepare or what, you know, no, like this is content is coming so quickly. You have to be a part of the conversation. You have to go above and beyond or you become irrelevant. And so I, I truly want to be an example for the students. And every time I see them exceeding anything I could do, it just makes me proud to see what, what they're doing and how, and I'm learning from them as well uh, in, in this industry. Yeah, if anything, you know, they they happen to go towards the education institution, but it seems like you're doing more than your fair share of bringing the ivory tower, you know, down into what their, you know, lives are like. Um, I'm, I'm just, I have to know, Jonathan, have you always uh, decided that you wanted to be a lifelong learner? Did you kind of have this uh, thirst for understanding things? Was it, you know, what what came along? What dots can you look at in retro and connect, you know, that would have led you into the world of digital and the world of teaching today? Yeah, I think I think it starts with my parents. Um, I think they pushed me. I had a, my mom was a, a Filipino Canadian my dad, an American, um, they both professionals. My dad was a doctor and my mom was a nurse. So they were, they were highly educated. And my mom coming from the mm -hmm. Philippines saw that education was a path towards uh, opportunity and independence. And so um, always pushed education. Now at the time, you know, I didn't want to learn, you know, I wasn't great at math or, you know, I didn't, I didn't flourish in the traditional subjects you learn in middle school and high school. Um, you know, I passed, I got my degree, I passed, you know, and then when it was to look at universities, I, it wasn't a choice in my, my household. You had to go to university. That was, was it. And, and because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, it was like, just go there. You'll figure it out later. At least you'll have a bachelor's degree. And I think a lot yes. of people of our generation um, can relate to that conversation. Just you'll figure it For out sure. later. Just make sure you have a bachelor's degree. So I looked at many different schools. I, I went to University of Florida because it was one of the top schools in the state. And, and I got into the school and, you know, I had friends there and it looked like a fun place to, to go. And I really struggled for about a year and a half of, you know, I started in the business school. Well, I actually started in the music school because I okay. was into music and I realized quickly, I don't want to play in the band. I don't want to do that. And so I moved into business school and within a semester, I think I got kicked out uh, or dropped a course or, you know, because mm -hmm. I wasn't disciplined at the time. And, and because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, I kind of fumbled around for a couple of years. And, you know, I did, I took marketing, I took management, I flourished in those courses. At the end of the day, I ended up with a history degree and a business minor. And my parents were like, great, you know, go, go to law school, you know, fine. You know, and I said, no, I want to be a music producer. I want to be on MTV. And they right. thought I was crazy. And at the time I was making beats, I was making electronic music in the very early days in the, in the late nineties. And yep. because I had my Canadian citizenship, I took a chance to move to Montreal and pursue that dream. And my parents, lucky enough, you know, they fought me on it and they thought I was going to, you know, end up, you know, living in, in their house. And, but they said, you know, right. we'll give you a year. We don't want you to have regrets in life and not pursue this. So we'll give you a year. And if, if you're not, you know, where you want to be, you can always come home and become a lawyer. And I said, fine, that's the only chance I need. And I moved to Montreal you know, at age 22 and, and, and just my fear that drove that was, I don't want to come home a failure. So I just worked and worked and worked and didn't make a lot of money and, and, and worked with artists and, and all that I learned how to promote myself. I was naturally a shy person. I didn't really, it was the first time I had to walk into a radio station and here's my CD or here, I want to work yes. with you or do this. And I, and it was just out of the fear of going home a failure. <laughs> and so I think 
not that my parents would have ever thought that and they would have they still support me today but sure. it was just constantly learning and i think i fell in love with what was happening with the internet at the time and all the new tools that was going out there and what i could do for myself uh selfishly to promote myself and then uh -huh. i figured out going into startup i could i could take what i learned how to do for myself and do that for a company and then that's when i realized that you know digital marketing never stops and if i'm going to make a name in this industry i have to just constantly keep learning and so i guess i just never stopped um, and and right. it, that's my biggest fear i think i a lot of us have motivations i think one of them for me is fear fear of of you know not being credible not being uh being outdated, not not being up to speed with what's going on. And and the world is moving so fast that you cannot be, and not everybody is up to speed. I know for I know hundreds of thousands of digital marketers are way better than me. Um, but I I do my best to try to keep up and and I hope that I can provide uh, some some you know experience and um, education to the next generation of digital marketers who are hungry and eager and constantly want to learn. I can't help but think as you talk about that, and I'm driven by the same, you know, I don't want to be outdated uh, and I want to keep experimenting. Um, you're not only taking that on for yourself, but for the last five, six years, you've been taking that on for a higher ed institution and you're actually you know, on their behalf, fighting to stay relevant and helping to, you know, keep them with the times. Um, I'm just wondering, Jonathan, if you had a magic wand or a crystal ball, what do you see, you know, uh, education institutions doing, maybe with your help to, to do this over the next couple of years? What sorts of things do you think uh, look like signs of the future for how people are going to be learning this stuff that never changes, that never stops changing. Yeah. So, you know, pre COVID before the, the yeah. world shut down and we had a pandemic, you know, everybody, I think you could not argue with anybody that said we're moving online and everybody knew we're going to move online, whether that was the entire world, education, everything was going to be online. And I think yeah. COVID happened and I could say, I'm pretty, I'm quite proud of, my colleagues at the University of Ottawa and and other institutions that, you know, are seen we're we're seen as this very slow moving beast for many different reasons. But then yeah. almost overnight, in the course of a week, everything you know, classes were moved online, and with with very little hitches uh, that I could see from my end. Um, uh, events that had been scheduled for months turned into webinars. Um, huh. You know, meetings that were were airplane where you had to fly to Toronto turned into webinar. So the, the education system pivoted just like the rest of the world did because we were forced to. Yes. And I, and I likened it to, you know, just, just being slowly pushed towards a cliff and then somebody just pushes you off. Um, and then right. you, hopefully you, your parachute Spread works. Your and, wings and, and start flapping. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you realize it's not as scary as we thought it was going to be. Right. That being said, we're now faced with, our students going to come back to school. You know, uh, our international yeah. visa is going to be. You see a hybrid of of in person and virtual. I mean, you've nailed the virtual. Just yeah, I think I think there can first be. First I think but, in now, but, right? And you did it. So, do you think you'll be required to do it again, or do you think there will be some mix? Well, right now, the University of Ottawa is planning for a mix. I think uh, what could happen. Nobody knows with 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 COVID. Could there be a second wave? You know, I'm preparing for for online. I'm happy to go. I miss I miss the in person. I miss connecting, looking my student in the eye. Um, it is yes. is somewhat difficult to teach um, through us to through a computer screen, but it's also afforded different opportunities. For example, in my class, I have a guest lect a guest speaker that comes in every week. Um, mainly because I want to to show what's the latest that's going out there and to also give an opportunity for networking for the students. And um, with COVID, it's not just Ottawa people that I have to come in my classroom. Now I can have somebody, I had someone, a former colleague of mine that lives, that was in Santa Monica at the time using, you know, Microsoft Teams to talk to my classroom, right? So now I can go right. on LinkedIn and say, 
okay, who wants to come speak to my class? And you don't have to be in Ottawa now. You just need to have a computer. So yeah. where there are you know, things that we're sacrificing, there's a huge opportunity for different ways to, be, to educate people. And I think students realize that and they're pushing the institutions to uh, go in that direction. And then you just have um, very enterprising professors who see this opportunity, seizing on this opportunity to move their schools in a much more faster pace into how to deliver online education. Sweet. Well, there is no question in my mind, you are one of those that are uh, taking that entrepreneurial approach inside of the institution. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for your time, Jonathan. And uh, you mentioned along the way a few things, uh, such as the courses you teach, uh, the certificate. Is there anywhere that you know listeners could be steered towards to find out more about you or the things that you offer? Yeah, I think, you know, if you're interested in in, in going back to school and and I all, again, being a lifelong learner myself, I understand we are in tough times. I think I, I would encourage you to check out the Telfer School of Management website um, to see what programs we offer. I think is for marketing specifically, uh, the Digital Marketing Certificate is an extraordinary course taught by industry professionals um, that give you you know, a light speed integration into what is happening today. And there's countless amounts of students that have gone through that course um, that have gone on to do great things. So I think it's something you want to look into. Um, but I, I just encourage listeners, whether you're, you're going to go back to school, to just keep learning, especially if you're in marketing, because the next generation, those students that I teach, um, they're they're gunning for you. <laughs> they're they're trying to 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 make it. And again, like maybe fear is a motivator. They they want your job, um, and some of them will push that way forward. And so that motivates me as well. I, I would love for one day one of my um, students I mentor, you know, push me right. and 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 replace me uh, when I'm ready right. to go um, and yeah. take over. And that's what you know. It's about bu building a legacy. So. I, I, I say it kind of half joking, but these students are hungry. They want jobs. And if they're going to learn better than you, they might be able to take it. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of friendly competition. Yeah. Um, you know, we all learn. Learning is something that propagates by itself. It's not like I have to lose something for you to gain something. And you share it so willingly. Hey, Jonathan, thank you again so much for joining me today. No problem, Glenn. Anytime. Thanks for listening. Follow the show on Twitter at Funnel Reboot. If you like what you have heard today, please consider leaving a review wherever you get your podcasts.